Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife video for you. Today, we're going to show my top five dumbest knives that I own. I, wh why am I doing this? Well, I did a video a while ago, and you guys seem to really enjoy it. Not a while, a couple days ago. About a very stupid knife. Stupid in the best possible way. And that's what all these knives are. They're stupid, but in a delightful way. And I'm very glad that I own them. I have no plans on getting rid of any of them. Uh, but is, these are just, yeah, the top five dumbest knives that I own. Just stuff that that makes me smile, gives me a giggle, but I don't really need in any way. They're mostly huge and mostly just, yeah, kind of dumb, but in a great loving way, like a, like a, like a little lab, like a, like a black lab, you know, that just looks at you and drools and doesn't do much and can't figure out how doors work. I'm getting into a specific thing about my old dog, but, but um, you know, just a, a big lovable thing that you don't know why you have it, but you want to have it and you're glad that you do. Some of them are dumb just because they're gigantic. Some of them are dumb because I just really didn't need to spend the money. And some of them are dumb because they're purchases that I found a way to justify in ways that aren't justifiable. So let's get going. The first two are from the same company and I don't think you're going to be surprised. They're cold steels. If you want big, silly, stupid knives, there's no better company than cold steel to get them from. Uh, the first one would be the Chris Voyager. That is why this camera is zoomed out so far, because this thing is huge. Uh, it has a ridiculous looking blade. Like you definitely couldn't ever open this thing up in public without getting a whole lot of side eyes, uh, but I love it. And it's not horribly expensive. 110.49 Aus 10A steel. Um, it's a whole lot of knife. Uh, what do I do with this thing? Um, not much. Uh, I have used it a little bit, but mostly it lives next to my bed on the nightstand. It's my, my weird, you know, scenario, stupid man brain thing. That's never going to happen. Going to defend my home knife. That's it sits there. Figure if I, if I came running out of my bedroom naked with this thing, people are, people are going to leave. Uh, you don't you don't want to deal with that. It's going to end badly somehow, probably for both of you, and uh, both for me and whoever walks in the door. And it's just uh, I, I just love it though. It's just cool. I sent it to Nick Shabazz to review. I don't know if he's done the review on it yet or not, uh, but I figured he'd get a giggle out of it as well. Triad lock. It is useful. It's got that very unique crisp blade, which is meant for uh, cutting um, things with names, uh, but it's. It's just, uh, I, I like it a lot. I, I really do. It is really comfortable in the hand, all that stuff. It is very useful. Ridiculously overly aggressive texture on the grivery uh, handles. It's it's going to tear your pockets apart if you can put it in there. Um, I have found a couple pairs of pants I have that it fits in the pocket, but not all of them. Uh, and I know guys do carry knives this big all the time, and I'm sure a bunch of them are going to chime in down below and say, I carry in a spot of XL every single day. Uh, congratulations. I'm not going to. Um, but... It's still just cool. It's just cool, and I love having it, and I love knowing that it's there. And it's in whenever somebody talks about my most ridiculous knife, this is usually the one that I pull out. It's pretty silly. Uh, the next one, not not as silly, but I just didn't need it, but I wanted to. So this is a Cold Steel Formax. This is the discontinued USA made one. Came with tan handles. I dyed them purple. It didn't, the dye didn't take all the way, but I actually kind of like the way it came out. It looks like purple wood grain, which I think is kind of cool, honestly. Um, and it's kind of, be, it's, I'm, I'm trying to make it sort of a channel mascot. I call it Grape Ape because it's just big and purple. Uh, but why did I not need it? Well, this is a $350 knife and I have, I have a 4Max Scout, which I did not put in this. I do not think the 4Max Scout is, is on the list of dumbest knives I have because it's only, this is only 110 bucks. This was 350 and this is uh, for 110 bucks, perfectly fine. You can't actually carry a Formax. They are actually carryable. They weigh a lot. They're both 10.2 ounces. They're both pocket anchors. You're going to notice that much weight in your pocket, but they cut fairly well. This is the same kind of configuration as the Voyager. Grivery handles, Aus 10A steel. I really like Cold Steel's Aus 10A. I think it's fine, but I have this and this is an actual usable Formax. I think this is usable as well, but I mean, this is a perfectly serviceable Formax. I actually did a comparison between the two, and I said buy this one. But I still got the other one, too. <laughs> so I got it because I wanted to dye it purple, 
and I like the format so much I wanted to try the USA one and see if it was a little better. Spoiler, if you don't want to go back and watch that video, it isn't. I, it's got 20 CV steel, that's nice, but other than that, yeah, get the get the Scout, you'll be perfectly happy. Um, but I love Andrew Demko designs, and I actually have one of his mid-techs now, which I love to tiny little pieces, and this is just, um, it's, it's great, it's fine, but the action isn't as good as the cheaper one. It's got some stick, you know, and it's just, it's just not, I like, the, I like the cheaper one better. I actually carry it more, but this is purple now. So I have it. I guess I justify it by saying it's for the channel. I don't know. I guess we'll segue into this next one because this was an also for the channel purpose. Now this knife actually of all the ones you're going to see here is, is by far the most carryable and the one that I do carry the most often. Uh, but I bought it for a dumb reason and I, I don't need it, but I'm going to keep it. And now I named it, so I have to keep it. Uh, it is my XM24, this vintage series. It's beautiful. That's a reason enough to buy it, I guess, to justify it. But um, I have several, or not several, a few XM18s. Um, does this do anything that my XM18s don't do? Nope. Nope, it doesn't. Um, I've always been curious about the 24, you know, it's just a larger version of the Hinderer XM18, which I, I love the XM18, and and I've always been curious about them. Uh, I wanted to do a comparison review between this and the Spartan Harsey folder, which is coming. Um, I thought that the Harsey compared more favorably to the XM24 just by looking at dimensions, and it does, and that's why I was debating, to, am I going to review it against the XM18, or am I going to compare it against the 24, or all three? Now that I've had them both side by side, it'll be the 24. This is actually currently running. It's, it has the triway pivot, but it's running on the phosphor bronze washers because that's what the Harsey runs on. And I wanted to make the comparison as evenly as, as even as possible. So when you see that, they'll both be running on the same uh, the same pivot, which I think is a, a you know pivot materials, I guess, which is which I thought was a, a good idea to do. But uh, did I need to buy a $600 knife for just a comparison? No. I did not. Now, I didn't pay the full boat for this. I bought it used. One of you guys found somebody, had it for sale, appreciate it, got a good deal on it. Um, but still, did I need to spend that much on a knife that I was only going to use in a comparison review? No, I didn't. And honestly, if I would have gotten a regular XM24 that was just one I could replace easily, I probably would have sold it by now. Um, just because I have lots of knives and this kind of, you know, I have lots of, I have a few XM18s, I have the Harsey. Um, I'm not going to give a spoiler which one I like better between this and the Harsey. I do like them both, but now this one is just so pretty and I can't get rid of it. And I named it Walt after my grandfather because he was, this knife is, I did a whole video about it. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it, I did not, did not really need an XM24. Sure as heck did not need a limited edition vintage. Um, I don't treat it like it's a vintage though. I do, this is of all the knives here, this is the one I do carry the most for sure. Oh, that you're going to see here. Because it's 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 not that bad to carry. XM24s aren't too horrible. Um, they are big, but they're not bad. They're not that bad. I, I can get by with it okay. Even today I'm wearing like some kind of, uh, there's some, I think, Costco cargo shorts. And they're kind of stretchy, but they're not lightweight, I would call. But, you know, stretchy kind of shorts. This fits in the pocket fine. Works great. Um, not a big deal. This is actually what was in my pocket. I just took it out to do this, this video. So, um... Yeah, and it still works pretty good on the bronze washers. I do have to say, not too bad. It should, with this big, thick, heavy blade. It should still drop okay, because <laughs> of gravity. Uh, next up, we'll do the knife that inspired this video, I guess. This is never going anywhere, and this is only $60. So maybe you can't call it stupid or dumb, just because it's so inexpensive that it's it's kind of impulse buy money. Um, and if, if you can get one, if they're still available, I highly recommend you do. If you're in a state that allows automatics or you have an exemption where you can carry an automatic in your state. Uh, this is the Boker Kalashnikov. Someone corrected me in the Kalashnikov. I'm going to still say Kalashnikov. I don't care. Uh, the Boker Kalashnikov XXL, uh, with the Bowie and D2 steel. These are only $60. They come in a few different colors. And it is the biggest auto I've ever seen, and I'm sure the biggest auto I will ever own. Almost a five inch blade. It's just humongous. Uh, but I did carry it the last couple of days, and it's not it's not horrible to carry. But 
Yeah, it's a, not a knife you can open when um, anyone is around. Because <laughs> it does, at least mine kicks pretty hard. It did have a couple people in comments saying their springs were weak. This one definitely is not. Um, it makes a big noise. And then it looks like this. And especially with this shiny Bowie blade, the other ones have coatings on them. Uh, maybe they're not quite as intimidating. Maybe they're more intimidating. I don't know. But it's very shiny. It is very hard not to notice. It does cut really well. But it's just so big and so ridiculous, and I just giggled like an idiot making this video. And I still feel that way every time I use it. It's just, it just makes me laugh. And for 60 bucks, maybe that's not dumb. But as far as just use day to day, yeah, it, it's kind of dumb. And they know that. Like, Boker does not take the Kalashnikov seriously. Some of them are very, very, very useful. And like the $40 ones, you know, that just are OS 8. And, and they're just normal, you know, EDC autos but they also make the the dessert warrior that's painted up like a cupcake and they've made them in lots of silly weird colors they definitely don't take it seriously and this is the epitome of uh them not taking themselves too seriously and i love that i'm glad that that happens i'm very glad about it uh the last one i'll bring up and again these were in no particular order they're just kind of how it segued in uh this is a heretic hydra single action auto um why do I put this in the dumb category? Uh, it's a very useful knife, but it's big, and it is so loud when you fire it. And it's a single action auto, so it's not super practical as far as, you know, if you're opening and closing it a lot, it's a process. But when you push the button, it makes this sound. And it kicks so hard, like you have to have a grip on it. Like I, it almost just flew back when I just did that because I did not have a grip on it. Tanto blade, it's very intimidating looking. It's huge, uh, single action, like I said. So you have to push the button again and charge it, which that's where all the writing is in there, which I think that's a nice touch. So it's completely free of logos other than obviously the giant pocket clip, which is also a bit silly. Um, it has, you know, is obviously all the logo, but I, the th reason why I keep this around is because every time I see it, I have to do that. Like, even if I just open up my, my knife case and I just see it there, I, I take it out and fire it a couple times because it just makes me smile. Like, they told me on the phone, I think, that uh, the spring is actually twice the length of the handle that's crammed down in there. So that's how much spring tension it has. And I did learn from uh, somebody in a comment. No, it was actually, I think it was on uh, Knife Junkie um, live show I was on there, and somebody's mentioned that the yeah and the single actions you know a double action if you fire it and in, into like your hand by accident it's just going to kind of poke you and it'll jump off the tracks uh single actions uh won't do that uh they will they'll do a lot more damage so be careful about that um your arm's probably going to move back before it does too much damage but still uh, if you've got it locked against something and you fire it into something it's going to go as far as that spring allows it to and on this one uh it's it's, it's going to be a bit uh but also, only knife I own that keeps the lanyard because the charging handle makes it easier to charge it. So this is the only knife that I own with a lanyard. I hate lanyards, but this one, this one it makes sense for. So, but I just can't stop doing that. I can't stop doing it. It is not inexpensive either. This is uh, over $400. I think it was 420 something like that. So uh, not an inexpensive knife. So just for something that makes me smile because it goes bang, uh, probably way too much money. I did have it for sale for a while. Not saying I won't sell it later, uh, but um, uh, it's it just makes me smile for right now. So I had it for sale for a while. It was up for like a couple weeks. Nobody made me an offer, so I took it down. And um, maybe I'll sell it one day, but it, this is the most likely to get sold of them. But I just, for right now, it's still just that noise. That noise gives me a giggle. So I'm going to keep it around for a little bit longer. But uh, it's a great knife, and it does cut pretty well. I like I like Tantos and all that stuff. It's it's hollow grind but it's still kind of thick behind the edge but it cuts all right and very smooth action and one more time then we'll end the video okay all right hope you guys have enjoyed this this is just kind of a little bit of silly laugh time put down below what's the dumbest knife you own they don't have to be huge and ridiculous maybe you just bought it for a stupid reason or something like that you know put put down below i know a lot of people have autos they're not even legally allowed to carry and there, there's all kinds of reasons to be stupid but they're they're good. Stupid's fun. Stupid can be fun sometimes. So put your put your uh, put your choices in the comments down below and uh, let me know. It'll be a fun little conversation. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.